Good morning, I'm Bridget Washington, chef and cookbook author. Today, at the Dinah E. Gold Research and Teaching Kitchen at NC State, we're talking about all things winter squash. We're going to talk about the four main types of squash. Then, we're going to talk about how to buy them, store them, select them, and cook with them. Then, we're going to jump right into our recipe, bean and butternut squash chili. So, let's get started. Here we have the four main types of squash that you'll likely find in your supermarkets now. Acorn, spaghetti, delicata, and butternut squash. Butternut squash is the most popular squash. It has a firm, tan skin. It should be heavy in relation to size. And when you're selecting it in the grocery store, you should look for the telltale dark spot, which is a quality indicator, meaning that that's where it was resting in the field. Butternut squash, like all of these four squashes, have the same things in common. They are all technically fruits, although they're treated as vegetables. They are all planted in the summer, but harvested in the fall, and they're all indigenous to Central and South America. In addition, they all are rich in vitamin A and C, and potassium and magnesium, and they're excellent sources of fiber. Now, butternut squash has this tan skin, so when you cut into it, it's an orange, dense flesh. But orange flesh tends to get sweeter as it ripens. And like its name implies, when cooked, it has a nutty, velvety, smooth flesh living up to its name. Butternut squash has this long neck as well as this bulbous bottom. This is where the seeds are held. When cutting into a squash, you can either cut into it lengthways, like this, to, re to re lengthways, or you could cut widthways, separating the neck from the bulbous bottom. Depending on how you're preparing your butternut squash will determine how you would like to cut the squash. For instance, if you would like to have a dice to saute or to add into a soup or a stew like we're doing today, you would want to peel the squash with a vegetable peeler, like this, and then cut the squash into cubes. Or if you're roasting it, you could actually leave the skin on because in the oven, the skin relents and it is very easy to peel when it is roasted. Next, we have our spaghetti squash, or what I like to call nature's pasta. Spaghetti squash, as you can see, cut it in half. The, the flesh is very firm when it is raw. However, when roasted, the flesh peels off with a fork into these very long, smooth, velvety, delicate noodles, something resembling spaghetti or angel hair pasta. Because of its mild flavor, it's an excellent vehicle for soups. To it's an excellent vehicle to carry your stews, something hearty like meatballs or pesto and even a curry. What we have to remember with storing a butternut squash is that it should be stored in a cool, dry place because moisture actually reduces its shelf life. You can peel out the seeds of the squash and roast them separately as well as a garnish for whatever dish you're making with the spaghetti squash. Next, we're going to move on to this acorn squash. Now, when you're purchasing an acorn squash, or when you're purchasing any of all of these squashes, you want to look for something that's heavy in relation to size. Now, the acorn squash has the shortest shelf life out of all of the squashes. And when also looking for an acorn squash, you should look for the telltale orange splotch because that is a maturity indicator signaling that this, that this fruit, which, you know, it's a fruit, is ready to be used, mature, and ripened. Now, acorn squash has these longitudinal signature ridges, and they, and it, which is easy to do in terms of, which you, if you like to prepare them, you could cut the acorn squash in half, roast it, and it serves as, an own, as its own bowl. I frequently use the acorn squash to house white rice, or brown rice, as well as quinoa. 
In addition, and lastly, we're going to move on to the last squash, delicata squash. As its name implies, delicata squash has the most delicate flavor out of delicate flavor and skin out of all the other, out of all these other four squashes. The delicata squash has a, a milder flavor, and because of that, and because of its thin skin, it is easy. The skin is very edible. One of the one of the preparations that I like to use for a delicata squash is to use it to amp up salads. For instance, here I have a delicata squash, squash that, that is already, already that's already cut. To use it in a salad, to roast it, I simply scoop out the seeds like this. And these seeds make excellent <clears throat> salad, adds excellent crunch to the salad, to a salad, as well as plant food. It is really good as a compost. And then I, and then, but I, I cut the squash into rings. Just like that. And with the skin on, because of its delicate skin, again, delicata squash, we put them on a roasting pan and we put them into the oven. And there you have it. One way to easily prepare a delicata squash with its skin on. So now we're going to jump into our recipe, bean and butternut squash chili. What I like about butternut squash is that its sweet flavor adds a very natural dose of sweetness to a chili that bursts in other flavors. So you have the acid from your tomatoes, the pucker from your seasonings, um, as well as the cilantro. But the chili, the sweetness of the butternut squash and that very natural velvety texture really makes all of the ingredients cohere. And that's what I like about this chili. So here we have, so here we're going to make. So here we have our brown, brown beef and onions. And to it, we are going to add a can of tomatoes. And these are store-bought tomatoes that you can find in the grocery store, readily available. And our beans, again, can of black beans. Red kidney beans. And the reason why we are leaving some of the juices, the canned juices there, is because it is because it offers a it offers a natural viscosity to the chili. Next, we're going to add our butternut squash. And here, our pear, our butternut squash, we put it in, and this is about a cup and a half of butternut squash. And that is raw and cubed into a large dice. And this, what I think, is a secret ingredient. Usually, people use some mantra and chili simply as a garnish, but I like to use the whole plant, the whole stem. And so I take the stem and I chop it up and we place it in here. And what it does is that not only does it offer some brightness to the chili when it's cooking, but it also gives it a beautiful, beautiful color and flavor profile when it's simmering. And last but not least, and the most important ingredient, arguably, is our seasoning blend. Our seasoning blend here consists of garlic, chili powder, onion, crushed red pepper, and cumin. So we're going to sprinkle all of that in. And then we're going to toss the combine. And you allow this to simmer. 
and you really could already smell all of the ingredients coming together, that verdant green of the cilantro stem. And this, you allow this to simmer for about 30 minutes. And here we are, after it's simmered and it's come together beautifully. You can see, still see all of the colors are there and they're present. There is a, the butternut squash because we used thicker pieces of squash. It is, has not completely turned into a mush, but it is still intact and firm and sweet and beautiful. And so now, this is the spirit, spirit pot. <coughs> now we're going to place it. We take our, we take our chili. We plate it into our bowl. See, all of the ingredients have really held their own, and none has overpowered the next. Then we're going to top with some sour cream, a sprinkle of cheddar cheese, and then garnish with some cilantro, which really acts as a perfect bridge from the cilantro stems we have. So here we have a very, very simple, adaptable, approachable weekday meal that you can make in less than 30 minutes using some of fall's best bounty and really marrying it to pantry staples. Butternut squash does a lot of the heavy lifting in elevating this into a dish that's really spectacular and unexpected. Thank you very much. <laughs>